How's it going everybody? Flint from Flint and Steel Survival and uh, I'm going to go through this pack today. This is what I took on my weekend trip just last weekend Easter. Um, I went on a three day trip with my mom, my wife and my grandma. We all went down to our property south of us and uh, opened it up for the year, got everything going, cleaned up and I just took all this stuff to play with. I didn't like camp out of it or anything. This was just gear I wanted to test out, play with, have there if I wanted to use it. Um, so yeah, I mean I filled this table pretty quick. And then these are some things I was going to add. Just uh, I'm going to put this guy in there and then I'm going to switch out the uh, ranger beads I had or paste beads, whatever you call them. Because um, I had, I'll show you guys. I made this one out of white paracord and white like olive wood beads and then um, Ohio Outdoor Explorers was kind enough to send me a red and black one and that's my favorite color so that's definitely going in there I'll probably put the skull one in this pack because I really quite enjoyed this pack it was very fun to have um, it staved off boredom you saw my chopping video with this you saw my tomahawk throwing video maybe I guess I can't assume that you did so we'll start with the bag. This bag was $30 plus tax at my local Walmart. This is the Ninja Day Pack by SOG. It is one of the best packs I've ever seen at this price range. Let's show you some cool things about it. It's got reinforced handle. It's got these Velcro um, spots for calm. Um, it's got all these little loops on the top. It's got two sections of Velcro. So here's my... Uh, uh, warrior paramedic seal um, if you look at this the front's got molly sides have molly I put my sheath for my Benchmade Adamus on there um, it's got this nice sunglass case that I ended up putting ammo in um, just because it was a nice separate spot to put it if you look at this um, velcro section it's got the SOG skull and helmet or beret, SOG skull and beret. The zippers are SOG logoed. Uh, really nice zippers too, actually. Nice, thick, um, I don't know what you call them, teeth on the zippers. And uh, it's got the nice fold over, like protective, almost waterproof kind of zipper guards. Um, inside it's got a lot of pockets. It's got like the hydration pouch or laptop sleeve. It's got two mesh pockets here on the front. A nice big open pocket with drain holes. Then on the front here, let me unzip this guy. I don't know why I zip these up. Sorry guys, bump the record button. So, um, in this pocket it's got a zipper on the top. Um, it's got this big back spot. Ooh, I found something else I didn't take out. What is it? Oh, that's a cool thing. I'll put that over there. Alright, it doesn't feel like anything else. Um, it's got two pen spots. It's got this little keychain deal. It's got a, like, uh, multi-tools will fit perfectly in that one. It's got this split pocket on the bottom. It's slipping on me. There we go. And it's got two large front, like, calculator pockets almost. And then, obviously, you can put stuff in that space, and it's a big space. So, And then this is just, like, a, another single pouch. And then on the side, it has one water bottle um, holder that I put my water bottle with a filter on in it, and it just increased its uh, usefulness. So... Like I said, SOG Ninja Day Pack, $30 at Walmart. I picked it up before Christmas, I believe. I just haven't put it to use yet. Um, but yeah, I absolutely love it. That's what the bag looks like full. It's really slim, really comfortable, actually. Let me flip this around. It's got really nice um, padding, both on the back as well as the arms. Um, I really like the packs that are connected like this up here because it kind of 
it shields your back from that point where the straps pinch you. It's got some nice uh, strap material here. Um, you can obviously clip these on and off. Um, I even turned this into a sling pack by just connecting this one across. Um, before I took it on this trip, I wanted to try it. And then as soon as you use the chest strap, it just makes it so much more comfortable. My dog's still chewing up that piece of wood from the last video. Alright, so like I said, Ranger Beads. Um, off Deep Wood Sportsman. So Bug Spray. I took my little Grindworks Arrow. I didn't get a chance to ride our four-wheelers to pick up some... Um, I don't know exactly what kind of tree it is, but it has really, really straight branches. I wanted to make a real arrow out of it. So here's my Grindworks Arrowhead, Damascus Steel. Can I help you? <laughs> okay, so there's my Arrowhead. I brought some earplugs for shooting. This is my Pro Knot cards I got from Southpaw Bushcraft. This is a new Millennium Vanilla Energy Bar, one of my favorite flavors. This is a snare made out of uh, aerospace cordage and a washer and one. Um, they're used for electrical boxes. I don't know what it's called. It's like a. You can also find them in fishing. It's like a uh, weight that you can just crush, but it's the end cap so the uh, wire doesn't fray. And then here's the anchor loop. I got some bank line. It's just put on this old spool. I don't know how much is there. It's got some micro cord in red, a whole spool. I'm going to pause this and see if my dog's whining. He's being a baby. So one sec. All right, sorry about that, guys. He was just whining for no reason, like usual. So, here he is. Say hi, Jackson. <laughs> um, he's going to fall, and I'm going to laugh. So, first off, we got a flashlight. This is just my uh, 511 tactical light. Had it forever. The clip broke off. I have a Speedy Sharp and a glow stick and a rain poncho and that's everything on this area don't be eating nothing then I have my Optimus gas power power gas <laughs> and uh, then I have a cook kit I'll pause and do all these kits separate maybe in a separate video I think I've shown it before but I'll still do a kit video of it I have a extra bag just in case I wanted to go away from camp. This is an Earl Dibble Jr. Yee Yee bag. Um, it's just something that's waterproof. You could also keep game in it if I was hunting. That would be the perfect thing to throw a dead animal in and not have it soak blood into anything. Next up is my Dark Wolf Knives Chopper. Put a video out on using this a little bit. Um, just barely this week it was posted. Jay Parker. Knife making professional. Did not take on a lot of wear from that use. You can still see me in it. Nice mirror polish. I have some Husky 7 mil drop cloth. Um, 0.7 mil, sorry. This is good for tart material. Plus, it's in such a compact size, and you have 108 square feet. Normally, I use the one size bigger that's a 2 mil thick drop cloth. That's like 200 and something square feet. It lasts a lot longer than this stuff, but this was just something small I could throw in. Then, my tomahawk. I'm sure you guys have all seen the SOG Tactical Tomahawks. I did a throwing video on this. Go check it out if you haven't. Um, this is my Silky Gone Boy in a Tom Chitwood sheath that I repurposed from another knife. Um, it fits my Gomboy perfect. And I just got through cleaning this blade back up. There's still some sawdust in the teeth. But I got this polish back out. I just used Scotch-Brite to get all the gunk off of it. And it worked like a dream. Um, 
I love the lock, the two position blade. So smooth, so solid. Um, I'm sure Laplanders are nice, but I would never trade this for any other. So throw this back in the sheath. My dog's following us now. <laughs> okay, this is my belt kit. Um, I got this at a like um, little festival a couple years back in my town. Um, I'll do a video on that kit as well. I'll put it in the kit pile. So I remember to do a video on it. Um, this is my Ontario Blackbird. I think this is called the Noir because it's black and green. Yeah, Blackbird Noir. Nice and worn. Starting to really get some uh, spots in the coating. Very nice knife though. And I just threw it in this bag because I can keep my Dark Wolf Knives survival I guess you'd call it a rig, it's a full rig, um, on my belt, but I can just keep this in the pack and not worry about it. And then I always have a backup solid knife if I need it. This is a army sewing kit picked up from a surplus store. I'm sure it's not issued, I'm pretty sure it was Fox brand, so I doubt it was <laughs> used by anybody. You're in the way now. All right, we'll get through this real quick. Jackson, come here. <laughs> come here. Sit there, eat your piece of wood, <laughs> leave me alone. All right, here's a Camelback water bottle. It's just plastic. Um, it's got those like um, Camelback um, famous lids or whatever. The You have to bite it to get water out. But this one comes with a water filter, and I have extra filters, two, four filters, three. Three extra filters, plus there's one that comes in the bottle. Um, so you can filter a lot of water with this. As you'll see in my cook kit, I have another water filter. And in that cook kit, I could boil the water, put it in here without ever straining it, and drink straight from it. I wouldn't have to worry about any grit getting in my mouth, you know. Uh, next up, we'll just go over my Benchmade Adamus while it's here. Beast of a knife. I did not get to test it this weekend because I was having too much fun with Jake's knife and uh, my Blackbird. But I want to I want to say that this is my one knife option if I ever wanted to go out, have an EDC blade and a Bushcraft blade all at once. I've seen people abuse this to the point where you would think it would break and it doesn't. And it's just so solid and heavy. That I can't see anything wrong with it. So that's why this is on the side of my pack. This is what I want to get at quick. Um, next up, I have a D-Mello Customs Necker. I took that just because I wanted to have a neck knife on the trip. I don't think it belongs in the kit because I wear it too much. So I'm going to put that back in the knife cabinet. Next up is my ammo that just came out of the pack. I'll put this back on the shelf. 38 Special. I got some uh, brass in there empty now, so put that in my reload pile. Next up is my Emergency Essentials Fuel and Fire Starter. I love this stuff. If it rains, if it snows, you can get a fire going no matter what as long as you have the stuff. It saved my butt during my uh, um, bachelor party trip. I took one friend out rabbit hunting for my bachelor party, so it rained the entire time. And we use this to get our fires going to cook with. Next up is a flint and steel kit from um, Dave Canterbury Pathfinder School. I got this and this from Uncle Redneck in his giveaway that I won. Um, this is a magnifying glass and this is a flint and steel kit. I took them both out to play with. Only ended up playing with the magnifying glass and it was overcast and snowing. The day I was playing with it, but um, it it still got some uh, charred paper. So then this is a lighter leash. I also got this from Uncle Redneck. Plus he gave me a white lighter so that you can see through it and see how much fuel you have. Um, I don't usually buy white lighters, but I do see the appeal of them. Then this was from my uh, 
a pocket box from um, Creek Stewart himself. This is the Baddest Bee Fire Fuses. They're basically little cotton twists that act as a match, like a forever match. They stay lit forever. I just caught my dog trying to lick the blade of a knife. Still doing it. Stop it. <laughs> what a dumbass. Alright. Here is just a cheap Chinese um, flint and steel striker uh, ferrocerium rod. I got this for Christmas from my dad. I don't know where I picked this guy up. Probably just bought it. You're ruining everything, puppy. Anyway, sorry. Magnesium bar, ferrocerium rod, and a striker. This is one of the ones I ordered from GearBest.com. This is just a plain ferrocerium rod. Uh, really soft, but it throws some good sparks. This is a tin that used to be primers, and now it's char cloth. And then Jason McDaniel sent me this guy. It is a fire starter or a ferrocerium rod. And the striker's inside, plus it has a whistle. So, very cool piece of kit. You can get them on GearBest for like 50-something cents a piece. Alright. Then some fat wood. I clipped these to the sides where I showed you those comm straps. I put one on each side. And then on one of them, I clipped this survival bracelet. It's got paracord. It's got a cheap compass. Um, a ferro rod and striker and a whistle so I have all those right on the side of my bag if I need to get to them quick and I'm going to throw in this compass from uh, Ohio Outdoor Explorers as well so that I have a good compass option it's also got a little light for reading the compass next I have a hundred feet of paracord in my favorite color red um, I want to eventually get like a tan. I want the whole bag to end up being tan and matching because in Utah tan or like a darker brown tan would be perfect. Um, then I have my leather bushcraft gloves on the leather belt loop that I made. Um, you just unsnap this, pull them off, leave it on your belt. When you're done, you just snap them back on. I just burned some uh, holes straight through the gloves. Um, below the seam so that the seams will hold it on. It won't let it rip past that. And uh, these are really good gloves. Next up I have, let's see, 10 pound test, 100 yards of monofilament line. Got this for a dollar at Walmart. And then I got this for a dollar at Walmart. It's got swivels, hooks, um, sinkers, two sizes of hooks, two sizes of uh, sinkers, and some swivels. So, great. Put those together. You have yourself a fishing pole right there. Um, and then next, I've got three more kits. So, this is a first aid kit. Contents are all on the back. Pause and read if you want. I only added a couple things. And I can open this up and show you real quick. Um, I added my shield, my uh, CPR shield. That was really important for me to have because I'm CPR certified. And I added a bunch of those pink camo band-aids that Bob sent me. I got this from 5150 The Bob. So that's that kit. I have my Altoids tin. It hasn't changed since my very first video. If you want to see what's in that, go check it out. Or It's my second video, sorry. First is EDC, second is this. Because I EDC'd this for a long time. This also goes in my uh, pouch that I got from Southpaw Bushcraft. So put that guy up there. And then these are from Jason McDaniel. I did a unboxing video on those. And I haven't altered these kits. I wanted to get out and use them this weekend. I wanted to use everything in these kits and show you that how useful they are. Please go support Jason in his store. He makes some killer kits. Um, and I know the guy um, puts his time and effort in these. And he has them well thought out. So I am going to do a video, maybe a couple videos on using everything in this kit. One's a fire kit, one's a survival kit, but I want to show everything in here, how it works and how good it is, because this is a great kit. He also made it orange and black for me, which is my favorite color combo for gear. Orange and black, red and black are my two favorite combos. So, thanks everybody for watching. I will do 
um, a couple videos here because I have updated this a little bit and I'll do my cook kit. I still haven't thrown my cook kit over a fire yet and I feel bad about it. I just haven't had the time. Or the need, really. So thanks everybody for watching. I appreciate it. Uh, stay tuned for more and uh, I'll talk to you later. Bye.